hello hello. Right, just get my driving stuff sorted out first before I start getting in the groove as I say. Um, yeah, just really to talk about the, the carousel of uh, alternative social media or um, something like that. Yeah. I, I was watching something, I was trying to watch actually, um, there's a chap called um, Kevin Moore, he's great, he's a great guy, he brings up stuff and so on, different things. But the problem is, okay. What's he doing? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Huh? Don't understand. Oh, okay. That was a bus. Okay, cheers. Um, yeah, it brings up some great stuff, but the, what the problem I'm finding when I'm looking around on YouTube is they're all telling me similar stuff. They're not telling me anything new. So this is why it's the carousel, because I think a lot of them look at each other's stuff and then they decide, well, we'll talk about that. And I think that's the problem. When we get the capitalism gets involved, it starts to mess up the whole structure. Then there's people going on talking about blue aliens or something, and like bird people, and uh, people that are universal soldiers, that have regressed on Mars, and when they come back they got memories and stuff like that and then what, what the interviewer is, this particular interviewer she says she, you know you know she was saying quite a lot and it sounds like she doesn't actually fully agree with what she's saying she just wants them to believe it if you know what I'm saying you know it's that kind of it's putting the thought in their head it's like well I know what you're saying but I don't necessarily uh, believe everything I'm hearing, so, uh, you know, if, if someone wants to be a bit more critical, they're starting to switch on that critical part of their brain. I'm all for new information, but it's just, a lot of it's like, they talk, go back to Roswell, they go back to people that believe they'll work at Roswell, and they just retired people from NASA, they probably didn't get much in it as a pension, so they might just make up all sorts of uh, baloney, get, them, get their name out there, you know, and uh, I don't know what you think. Uh, or some of them might have mental health issues, I don't know. There's, um, I mean, there's lots of stuff out there. I mean, I talk about lots of stuff myself, but I try to, things I'm aware of, things new that come to my mind, things that I've experienced, um, that it seems more important because then like, I know if it's true to a certain level. So if, if something visited me at night or I've had a particular type of dream, something that's very surreal, um, like I was in a particular location or saw an event or something like that, it, um, it gives me something to research into. But when somebody says, you know, you know, you know, and they're saying, well, well the greys abduct people, you know, their, their race um, can't reproduce, that's why they need the DNA, you know, and, um, you know, stuff like that. It's, <laughs> just use, you know, it, it is truthful, you know. Like that. And um, it's just a little bit, I just want more information. I think. It, people are doing that to, as a validation, like saying, because I know all these other conspiracies, therefore whatever I'm telling you now, got to be true. And or they say, well, I think with an open mind, but there's just so much information there that they need to do their own, they need their own research, they need to develop their own contacts. It's not very hard. I mean, you can try remote viewing um, somewhere like Mars, so you get an idea of what Mars looks like visually, and then you're just looking for the small information. See yourself going to what you believe Mars is, and then looking at the actual ground. Is is it red rock there? Um, is is there plants or aren't there plants? You know, keep it really, really, really basic. Don't try to create something with your ego, because then you'll put everything in there that you want. You know, like, I mean, there'd be a swimming pool there, and other things that don't exist that you just because you desire to have something. Um, there to the point that you create it and there probably is other things on there definitely is a subterranean I believe that to be true I also think that um, that it being red it might not be as red as we think when we're actually there because of the way the light is and um, 
like with the moon, when the moon gets eclipsed by the earth, the moon turns, it, you get a blood moon or red moon. And so that suggests that why it's blue to us, the atmosphere, from outside, it might not be, it might look like Mars. Maybe that's the big conspiracy. They need to put um, a colour filter onto the planet when they're, when they're filming it because it doesn't look right. And there's lots of things that don't make sense to me, like why can't why can't stars be seen in space? And this thing about the atmosphere magnifies it and stuff like that. I just I'm a bit unsure about why one physical property is so different from another. I'd expect to see specs or something something out there. <coughs> And I wouldn't assume that like um, the atmosphere magnifies it that much, and it filters it that much that the light light changes into a different frequency. I guess, and then I can see it within a, a frequency band. I can see it, which means the light traveling across the universe isn't in the same way. It might be like X-ray or something else. I think that's right, X-ray, or something turns into uh, infrared, so therefore you get the atmosphere warms up. So that's one concern, it's just a, just a carousel of conspiracy, they bring people on, they say, I've had an alien experience, they say, oh, they're the council of whatever, you know, or whatever they'd like to, to add to it, and then they quote other conspiracies constantly. And like saying, oh yeah, ancient civilization, Stone Age stuff. But I think if you throw lots of things out, it just doesn't quite gel so well. And it really needs to take time to um, research that. I think there's definitely ancient cultures and there's techno technologically advanced races. How how actual human they are to the native humans, I, it's a bit more of an open debate, really. Uh, I think there's definitely possibly some extraterrestrial involvement in our creation because there's a few genes and there's also a lot of genes that are not common in any other species at all. Um, it's likely there's some monkey DNA in us that didn't come from any ape. If you look at the way a monkey thinks and behaves, it's more human-like than um, a chimp, actually. Um, but that's... We don't share that much. I think, actually, that's right, because it's something to do the chromosomes chromosomes in a monkey are closer to the humans, I think. A number. Same with a bat, actually, a bat as well. So if you're going to be doing genetic research, you'd end up, you know, you could put like bat's blood into a human, and it would be less of a problem, but if you put the bone up, bovine or something, it's a different ball game, because there's a different number of genes in it, and um, Chromosomes are slightly different, so yeah, definitely. Definitely something very different. Um, the other thing I was noticed as well, it's kind of irritates me, is is stuff to do. I think maybe it could it could be to do with the transgender human agenda. But they ask things on forms. Um, around uh, ethnicity and uh, they don't really, not necessarily ethnicity, sexuality. I mean, there's a form that's like um, dealing with somebody in their, um, in their eight, sort of 80s going on 90s. Are you, you know, what, sex, what sexual um, gender are you and all these sorts of, or, or whatever. So it's just kind of like, well, why is that relevant? Okay, the woman was married in the past. But I think if you're probably not in a relationship, it's totally irrelevant because you might be neutral. You might have nothing there. I mean, if you're not motivated sexually in some way, um, I mean, if you're fan if, apart from having fantasies in your head, there's not actually anything external that's going on to match you up with a particular um, sexuality. And I think it just seems silly because I was asking a question to the carer. You know, would you what what sexuality? And then um, also the client. The client's got. Um, I was dealing with has got uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, so it doesn't really. I don't think she's thinking. You know what? I'm gonna chase some guys today, or, or check them out on Facebook or something. She's probably the last thing in her brain. I think she's more interested in her dog. So what should I have to put in her bestiality in there or something? Because she's got affections towards her dog more than she has a human, probably. 
and so it's 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 a pointless um, pointless really. But it's government stats and this idea of pushing this equality diversity agenda. And then the only problem with the diversity and equality is very one sided. I mean, I could say that I have I'm straight and therefore I'm less tolerant of someone of a different sexuality. And by saying that, they'd say, well, you're homophobic or whatever. He said, no, because in my preferences. Um, override other people's in how I perceive certain things or the culture I was raised in. You know, if I was raised with a, the the two point five children scenario and in an area that was sort of I don't know, it just had a particular type of culture. Some things were talked about. So when someone exposes you and says, "Well, you've got to be more diverse. You've got to discuss things. You've got to accept maybe." you know, like your mother might be bisexual or <laughs> things like that, or that your, you know, your granddad's now sapiosexual and um, all these other things, just these labels chucked in because there, there probably isn't a fixed labels and um, people develop very strong um, beliefs. So believe, they're led by their beliefs um, and they're led by their values. So if they develop values around something, then they can pretty much strongly stick to them. But um, historically, it it you know basically doesn't really matter. So I guess um, yeah, I was gonna say um, things like when people go to prison, their sexuality can change. Exposure could could change. I mean, if I was I don't know, this just for an hour, not. But if I was, for instance, I only had male attention. Um, I was in some sort of commun isolated community, and and that it might be. It may be a sort of, it may blur the lines a bit, you know. Um, people maybe become more sort of um, transvestite, and then that kind of, it's kind of, in a way, it's the spiritual feminine of attraction then. Um, and then you could find a sort of mediocre ground. So basically, if somebody matches your criteria in your head, even if they're not exactly what you're, you know, you think you're predestined or programmed. To sort of be attracted to that can change under the right circumstances. So, so yeah. So basically, um, my thoughts on sexuality is it's it's quite fluid uh, to a, to to a degree, and and it's based on the platform with the way you think really. So yeah. So that's definitely definitely works, and that's sort of that that sort of part of um, the thinking of uh, people's culture. But I think uh, with forms, it's less relevant. I mean, I don't know how all that's gonna you know, impacts people and also stereotyping people um, or how how people's religious sides of it is catered for because there are people that actually don't they're, quite, they're because they're so sort of placid, easy going and so on they just go with the flow so they don't care and they're forced to actually to care about things that don't actually bother, bother them so yeah, so that's my thoughts on this forms and diversity and issues around collecting data and it not really having any true value outside of um, pushing this, it pushing other ag agendas on the plate, you know, like they say, oh, there's more people that are transsexual than there was. There's just more people that feel comfortable acting or becoming transsexual than rather than they are. They just it's just a choice, basically. Everything's governed by choice and free will. So um, anyway, enjoy your day. I'm getting all sort of politicalised and politicised and all these other eyes. Um, so have a good one and speak to you soon.